Ever since the combat achievements have moved over to a point-based system, I've been thinking about what tasks allowed for the easiest route to the mid-tier rewards. I've compiled a spreadsheet of 115 tasks that will leave you more than enough wiggle room to cut out some of the tasks that you don't feel like doing, while still receiving up to the hard-tier rewards of the combat achievements. Today we'll be tackling the Barrows tasks, as well as some of the various monster kill tasks. These two sections will account for 27 points, leaving you just 6 points shy of the easy tier rewards. Keep in mind this is mainly focused at players that with little to no rating experience, so the tasks will favor the ability to do multiple tasks in one area as fast as possible, even if they're low point tasks, as opposed to doing one or two Grandmaster tasks, granting 6 points. Although the easier, high level tasks will still be covered. On screen, you can see the tasks we'll be tackling at Barrows today. The green tasks are the ones we can do simultaneously, and the orange one is going to be one we'll use a separate run for. I'll be using my alt account for this series, as it more accurately represents the average player with these goals. For this area, you'll need entangle runes, a magic weapon, a special attack weapon, preferably a dragon dagger or dragon claws, your preferred method of killing Aram, stat boosting potions, a stamina, prayer potions, a spade, food, and a strange old lockpick for faster KCs. Starting out, the big thing we want to get out of the way is our can't touch me combat achievement. While working towards 25 KC, we will be attempting this combat achievement every run until it's done. Pray for success, what defense, and just like that should be completed passively while working on the KCs. When spawning the brothers, make sure you're ready to move as soon as you click the coffin. There's a tick delay between this, them spawning and attacking. This gives you enough time to get to the other side of the coffin and prepare to freeze and save spot them. I'll be showing the first brother in his entirety, but the next I'll cut down the clips for viewing purposes. Having a Carol or Aram tunnel makes this task much easier as you don't have to worry about them spawning the melee brother in between rooms and the crypts. Depending on which binding spell you're using, you'll have more or less attacks on the brother between freezes. Entangle ensures you'll have six trident attacks before the spell expires. Use five if you want to be safe. You cannot instantly refreeze a target. You must wait about five ticks. So keep this in mind to avoid frustrating instances of like hitting the freeze and it still like hits you. So take your time. The melee brothers for the sake of this combat achievement are exactly the same. Just be patient and you'll get this done very easily. For Carol, we want to get our Just Like That combat achievement out of the way. Here I'm doing it passively, but if you have lower stats and are struggling to kill Carol in 4 specs, you can sit behind the coffin and wait for your special attack to regen, just to make sure that you really get the task completed before you're done the KCs. Here I have a Guthans Tunnel. Having a strange old lockpick significantly reduces the chance of me running into him prior to the final chest, as well as speeding up the overall KC time. I also totally don't mess up the combat achievement at the end here and cut it out. Nope, wouldn't do that. With Pray for Success done, we can start working on Faithless Crypt Run. Make sure you drain your prayer to zero before entering your first crypt. And if you messed up on Can't Touch Me, just remember to be patient. I'm repeating the task on this run as well. Having a non-melee tunnel helped me out a lot. The process for this run is going to be much of the same. I did however swap in some Dragonhide armor for better defense against Aram. For Carol, I walked under him in between his attacks, since his attack speed's very quick. 
You can also hide behind the coffins to eat up after taking a lot of damage. A nice little Darox helm to round out here. With those in the KC tasks out of the way, we're done with Barrows. Time to move on. Getting ready, I'm bringing a melee setup. Make sure you have with you a Slayer helmet, or the required Slayer specific pieces to construct one, boots of stone, a rock hammer, a mine shield, a leaf bladed weapon, and something that puts you next to a fairy ring that you can access. The first area we're hitting up is the Slayer Tower. You can use a Slayer ring if you have them, and I'll be using the fairy ring. We're gonna kill a Bloodfeld, Aberrant Spectre, and a Gargoyle. Next option, let's give her points to fight a Skeletal Wyvern. Kind of out of the way, but it's a free task. Next up, we're going to Malkorum Slayer Dungeon. We're going for a Worm, Hellhound, and Greater Demon. There's also a Fire Giant spawn, but we're going to kill another one of those in the Giant's Den anyways in a minute. That's down south of the Chasm of Fire. So now that we're done with the giant stone, we really only have the Kurask left. I'm leaving out the black dragon as we can combine that with the KVD tasks, and the demonic gorilla I'm separating until we work on the medium achievements at least. Most people going for the easies are really not going to have Monkey Madness 2 done. So this is going to be a multi-part series to be more digestible for not just you, but for me. I'm new to editing and content creation in general, so this is all a learning process. I can't thank you guys enough for the amount of likes and views my Zora video got. I'm trying my best to improve the quality of my videos, and this series is the first step. When all the sections are done, I'll upload an all-in-one version for those who want to do this all in one sitting, but for now it's going to come out in sections. Um, I might also consider releasing the uh, big Excel document that I put together in preparations for this. But yeah, thank you so much for watching.